And it got so bad, Rochelle. Mm -hmm. It got so bad. He worked for Frito Lay. And Frito Lay companies back then, when they hired you, you got hired on for life. And you really had to mess up bad to get fired. Right. Okay. Mother called and she talked to his boss or somebody down mm -hmm. there Frito Lay. And when on their payday, mm -hmm. we would get in the car. And mother would go and get his check. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear. Wow. They would cash. They would cash his check and made sure that she got her boys. Mm -hmm. You know, got her money, and she would give him so much right there. I know it had to be embarrassing. Yes. Yeah. You know, but that old man stayed on that job. Oh. And every Friday we were right there. Mm -hmm. and she got on. Mm -hmm. So, uh, then we, he come on home, you know, there wasn't no arguments, there wasn't, mm -hmm. no, wasn't no bad getting along mm -hmm. or nothing, because he knew a lot of times, we, you know, what he did with, we could never keep a car, because he'd get his head bad and he'd wreck it, mm -hmm. you know, or he'd wind up in jail, and uh, he and my uncle, just like when I was reading, Mm -hmm. You know, and you uh, reading your book, and you were saying that family gatherings after everybody was all happy didn't take a few seconds, mm -hmm. and everything was going bad mm -hmm. because it was some relative had you know got mm -hmm. his head bad, and he's it, it, it's a brawl. Yes. It's already yes. a fight going on. So right, because they really you know they sitting around trying to enjoy each other's company, but it's so much other tension. Yeah. going on that nobody unresolved issues right and so that's what i told him i said we before we talk about putting together a family reunion until we get all the stinky stuff from under the rug i'm not attending because i don't know how to sit and be fake and everybody said you want to have one big kumbaya counseling session i said no i don't want to have a big counseling session and we just air it all out but we have to start taking some steps and mediate and then sometimes we have to let go mm -hmm. So you already understand mm -hmm. already. I'm, I'm already a certain age. Mm -hmm. And that part of my life, I've tried to heal it. I'm trying to heal from it. Mm -hmm. And we need to start from now. Mm -hmm. And let that all And I said that, Dad. I said that as well. That's when I, um, two Christmas ago, I said, I don't want to keep rehashing the past. I don't want to, but I felt bad because I'm out here saving other lives. And souls and meeting all these other people and going to do this in the world and I'm like I'm, my conscience beat me up because like okay but you ain't doing nothing about your own but I tried so that part of my conscience and everything even if the enemy tried to rise up I just shut up and get on back because I know what I did I paid for counseling nobody showed up so I went and they got my own counseling. I got me right Dad thought he was cool go back in the day. This cousin I talk about all the time, Clarence Thomas, was an inspiration to me. He was an old man, he was small, he was dressed, he was cool. He nice clothes all the time, blue clothes, wore diamond rings, and he was a little bit. <laughs> but for my 21st birthday so was it let me ask you this was it hard for that's something else that I've always been interested in learning about for as a womanizer and I really think home, being a homemonger is a spirit do you think if you wasn't taught any of this and if you see it that you have to make the conscious decision to say no I'm not going to be like that yes you do Sure you do, because you know right from wrong, mm -hmm. you know, and you see uh, what it's done to home, mm -hmm. you know, and how it's affected kids, right. and you remember how you were coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, my cousin, as he got older, mm -hmm. he told me, he said, you know, everything you did, everything good you didn't go. Right. And that pasture ain't that green on the other side. Right. So, you know, and we were talking, mm -hmm. and he would teach me. Mm -hmm. and, you know, he taught me, and I admired him. Mm -hmm. you know, 
Uh, you ain't gonna get the food with it no time soon. <laughs> you just been wanting to touch me for two days. <laughs> Girl, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, well, well. If, if he's a good mm -hmm. And when I got ready, when I was. Getting ready to marry her. Mm -hmm. You know, he sat down and talked to me. Yeah. And he really cared. He really talking about family. Oh. Uh -huh. He really cared about her. I mean, he loved her. Mm -hmm. You know, when I went around her. I'm sure the I could, you know, there wasn't nothing going to happen. We sit at his right. house and drank and right. laughed and talked and stuff. Right. But and his his mother and father you know, were my great aunt and uncle, mm -hmm. and they were more grandparents to me than my own grandparents. It can be like that. Trust me. I tell everybody. Tell him to go home. I be hanging over there with you. <laughs> Going with him, cutting you off. Mm -hmm. And she was a jealous one. Mm -hmm. And she was not eat. She fight him like it wasn't nothing in this world. So, mm -hmm. You know, so she would tell me she's uh, when we go cut your ass. She knew mm -hmm. where we were, mm -hmm. and she would drive by. <laughs> I'm that sure that take too much energy. And so she told me she said, "I bet not ever." You going to cut a yard with your uncle? I bet not ever come by there and kick and I can't see you. Yeah, I'll get out that car and I'll whoop your ass. I know that's right. <laughs> Everybody gonna be right. 